Hello, this is Janice So from Escape Studios for the Foundry. In this video, we will be looking at the new Oflow and Kronos nodes in Nuke 9. We will investigate what's new and what have been changed so you can adapt to the new nodes straight away. Now let's get started. We already know that these are more advanced retiming nodes using motion estimation technology. In Nuke 9, both of them got upgraded and received substantial improvements in both performance and features. To start off, Oflow is not GPU capable, so its performance is compatible with Kronos, and both received the channel selection options, as well as the new resampling filters, namely Lenzos 4 and 6. However, Kronos remains available for NukeX only. Now let's look at them individually in more detail. Let's start with Oflow. From here, we can see that the control panel of the new Oflow on the right hand side is quite different from Nuke 8 on the left. The most obvious is the GPU capability. It's added now to use your available graphics card for enhanced performance. There is now an input range option where you can get the frame range from the input node or typing a frame range to be retimed. There's also a channel selection option. The old speed and source frame timing methods have been augmented and the related controls consolidated. We now get the timing options of output speed, input speed, and frame, and a subsequent control that toggles based on the timing selection. Filtering is changed to resampling now with the additional Lenzos filters, which will provide better image quality, especially on the edges. Work mode is eliminated along with the correct luminance and the block size options. Shutter time now has its own expandable section, so the control panel UI is even cleaner and clearer. We now get a flicker compensation option, as well as the option to set the vector display density. The timeline also obeys the resulting frame range if you put the viewer display mode to input. Here's a screen grab with indications for your reference. The working of the node is otherwise straightforward and still similar enough to Nuke 8 that you shouldn't have too much problem adapting. Let's look at an example in Oflow to see the differences between the new timing methods of output speed and input speed. We have a clip here, and it looks something like this. We got the train traveling from screen left to screen right. Now let's look at the result from Oflow, where I have a random speed set to 2.7. Let's choose a frame to look at. So at frame 62, with a speed of 2.7, this is the result from output speed. If we change that to input speed, it looks exactly the same. And that is because the speed is constant. If we look at another example, where I have a couple keyframes set. So I frame one, I have both of them set to the speed of one, so they start at regular speed. And the next keyframe, at frame 62, I have both of them set to 2.7. However, now we see the result coming out from both modes are different. In output speed mode, which means at frame 62 of the output, it has a speed of 2.7 and the train has gone this far in input speed mode, which means at the input frame of 62, it has a speed of 2.7. So at the resulting frame 62, the train has actually gone further than the output speed mode. This takes a little getting used to, but if you play with it for a little bit, you'll pretty soon grasp the idea. To help you understand the difference between input speed and output speed, let's look at a few graphs. In this graph here, the bottom film strip represents the timeline. The top is our source. When we set input speed at 2, that means based on the input frame numbers, we're going twice as fast. So an original 100 frame clip will be shortened to 50 frames. It will go something like this. For output speed mode, however, all the frame numbers and speed are referring to the output. So when output is running twice as fast, our frame 100 of the result will be taken from the original frame 50. So it goes something like this. Now let's take a look at the improvements in Kronos. There are actually not that many differences in the control panel. There's the addition of the channel selection. The old timing control is renamed to method 
which is more appropriate. There's an additional timing control with the options of output speed, input speed, and frame. The speed and frame knobs have been consolidated into one that toggles based on the timing selection. A new motion knob is added to choose between the new regularized or the conventional local motion estimation algorithm. The vector smoothness knob is defaulted to strength, which is associated with the new regularized algorithm. And now there's a resampling pull-down to include the new Lenzos filters. Here's a screen grab of the default control panels of a Kronos in NUC8 and NUC9 with indications for your reference. NUC8 is on the left and 9 on the right. Even though on the surface, the control panel doesn't change drastically, the addition of the advanced motion estimation algorithm from Ocula enables Kronos to provide much better resulting image with less artifacts and smoother warps. The resampled result has less pulsing between regions. Not to mention the whole process is faster as well. Timeline also obeys the resulting frame range from Kronos if you put the viewer display mode to input. Let's look at an example in Kronos. I'm using the same footage as the one we saw with Oflow, and I have set a few keyframes for the speed. This is the result we get with the regularized algorithm. It's adopted from Ocula. It's a semi-global motion estimation. If we change that to local, we see some misplaced pixels. Even if I crank up smoothness to a higher value, it's not really helping. In regularized, the control of strength allows us to bring back local detail. So the higher the value, in a sense, is less smooth. So you can see that it has an exact opposite effect as the smooth control. To see the differences between the resampling filters, we have to zoom into the image. Now let's look at the edges. This is the result from the conventional bilinear filter. This is Lenzos 4 and Lenzos 6. We can see that Lenzos filters does provide us cleaner edges. Let's test Kronos out on something that's a little bit more challenging, hair. We have a clip here with flying hair. I have set up Kronos with random mode and random speed. Let's look at the result and also compare it with the nearest original frame. This is a real-time result. Everything seems to be nice and smooth, nothing pops. Let's stop there and compare it with the nearest original frame. So that's the original. This is real-time, original, real-time, original. Let's look at the different frame. Real-time, original, real-time, original. As you can see that the new Kronos node is able to keep the integrity of the original image quality very well. Just one more thing to add here. Regardless of which timing method you use, as long as you have keyframe set, you can always go into the curve editor and set the speed ramps to your liking. The new control panel of Oflow is actually very similar to Kronos. Even though Oflow is still using the conventional motion estimation technology, it is significantly faster and better than before. In conclusion, both Oflow and Kronos have much better performance, providing faster processing and better looking result. Kronos especially has received the most advanced motion estimation algorithm resulted from ocular technology. The operation of both nodes are very similar now, with very similar controls that are designed for ease of use and understanding. The major differences between the two are that Kronos has the more advanced motion estimation algorithm, matte output option, and is able to use the input mask to separate the foreground and background. This is Janice So from Escape Studios for the Foundry.